So welcome to today. I'm Christine. I'm Liz. And I'm Sarah. And we are Double Defense. We're an all-female New York Rangers podcast, bringing you fun conversation about our New York Rangers, the NHL and hockey, and so much more. Thank you for joining us. Hi, this is Liz from Double Defense. Please give us a follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Instagram at double underscore defense underscore NYR and our Facebook page, Double Defense. To answer your question, I had a few, but I wasn't nearly on the same path that you were. I'm quite jealous. Don't be. As fun (laughs) as it was. (laughs) And we took turns. So when Christine turned up, because we had this great meetup at Beer House, which is an amazing place for like pre-hockey game drinks because it's right next to T-Mobile Arena. And then Stacey Nantini from Ladies of the Nights, who does all like the ladies of Facebook pages, had organized like to have everybody come meet there. So it was really awesome. And Christine turns up and she, she's like, I'm so hungover. And we're like, what Like, what happened? And also, I've, I've been texting you. Like, yeah. I haven't heard from Christine all day. My... Like, what is happening? And then finally, finally, you posted something on Facebook and we're like, oh my God, thank God she's alive. And then... You're like, yeah, I had my phone in airplane mode since, since I forgot. <laughs> so you should have seen how I discovered it. I was like, I'm like, I haven't even heard from Liz. I'm like, I'm not. And then I'm trying to text my kids. I'm like, are you still going to meet us? And the, the text wouldn't go through. And I'm like, why is it not going through? It took me forever to even realize that my plane was in airplane mode or my phone. See, I think I might <laughs> still be drunk. Yeah. So, so we, we turn up there and Christine is like looking to start looking away. And I'm like, are you okay? I was she's like, like, she's, like <laughs> she's like, I think we got back at five o'clock in the morning it was after five <laughs> it was after five because so, you rallied though you did a great job you did a great Ooh. job rallying we had a great meetup and then I think we were drunk again by the time the game by the time the game started we were definitely back to being that's drunk what again. I that's what I was not hung over I literally was at the pregame down by the glass and I'm like did you I turned around I'm like I don't think I'm hung over anymore <laughs> just in time like, for the game yeah I feel good <laughs> then the next morning which we will get to in a little bit but the next morning like we all met up for brunch and I'm sitting there and I'm like oh man I am I am hurting right now <laughs> Woo! so, so I, I got a roll <laughs> It was a good time, Sarah. You were very missed. Your cardboard cutout had a great time. <laughs> but appara- apparently That's... we're mastering the art of being in multiple places at the same time. I was going to say, I, I think we had a, we must have had a great time at the Calgary game too. <laughs> you did. You did. I think we were all in agreement and, and we can talk about this more, but beginning of that game, I was like, what is happening here? Like, it was strange. And I'll talk about more in a bit, but definitely by second intermission, or sorry, first intermission where I was like, okay, let's, let's fix this. <laughs> it got a lot better. <laughs> Oh, I guess we got to start drinking then that maybe that's the key. I guess we still have to figure out what's working for us and what kind of luck we can bring these teams to win. We do need to take credit for some of it. I think just for the record, (laughs) I've gone to three games this year. They have won all three in very different ways. And I have to say that win in Vegas last night was or the, I guess it was the night before at this point. It's totally <laughs> We've discombobulated. Mo- on yeah, just Wednesday, a disclaimer. On we Wednesday still night. may be drunk. <laughs> yeah. um, the blogs are saying it. The podcasters are saying it. I'm going to say it right here as well. Best win of the season. They looked great. They were there for the full 60 minutes. There were a couple of like, maybe some like slightly stupid penalties. But overall, that was a game that they needed to win. And they dominated. They played so well. We had, I mean, it was such, such an enjoyable experience, not only to be there like together and be able to meet fellow Rangers fans and fellow fans from Ladies of the Knights, but also to go see an awesome win like that. And in the, in the arena, there were still so many Rangers fans, the Golden Knights fans, picked up and left with like 15 minutes to go. They were gone. So it basically left a ton of Rangers fans and there were chants of like, let's go Rangers in the stands. When the game ended, I think like people were cheering because they were all Rangers fans. It was great. And the vibe afterward, as like when we were all walking back to the bar, everybody was cheering for the Rangers. There were so many jerseys. It was great. The Knights fans were very nice as well. I have to say, you know, we've been in places where they're not so nice. Definitely a lot of congratulations on how well that the game was played it was just nice I enjoy the arena I kind of enjoyed the team and their social media I just the whole place is electric there so it's fun the show we get a new <laughs> phrase I don't know when we want to bring that up in the beginning of the game when we went down to three players and the Knights scored their only goal 
I don't know if you're aware of this, Sarah, but uh, Vegas has a chant that they do when the other team gets a penalty. I don't know why they don't do it when they get penalties because they had plenty too. Yes. I think it was the first penalty of the game, but it happened simultaneously. So we go down and they're starting to kind of do stuff. They're starting to chant. I was kind of like, what's happening? And then we get another penalty right off the bat. So now we're down five on three and they're chanting. Liz is down five people because we found empty spots and we were sitting, we're on the roof and she kind of leans forward, looks at me and she's kind of like, what the, so let me, let me set the stage here. When the, <laughs> when the, when the team that the golden Knights is playing uh, gets a penalty, the entire crowd does that scene from game of Thrones where they start chanting shame and like pointing at the person and everyone started doing it simultaneously. And Christine and I are looking around. We're like, what is happening here? And I look down at Christine and she looks at me and then Christine just starts going shame, <laughs> shame. So we were dying. This is like, what the? It was, it you was can't such see our faces. She just looks at me like, what the? And, and I'm just looking, I point right at her and I'm like, shame, shame. Plus we had like a seven-year-old kid in front of us doing it too. So it was so funny. It was, um, I, I guess every every team and every arena have their own traditions. There were certain things that the Knights did. And that was really funny. That is one of them. There were a couple of other things that they did. Like um, in the national anthem, when you get to the word night, like everybody screams out night i think it was san jose had the tradition of like just after the national anthem is over you yell out that the opposing team sucks <laughs> like there's just really like fun interesting little traditions that have arisen from each arena but that shame thing was was so funny so if any uh, vegas golden knights fans are listening to this kudos to you guys you have like some cool fun stuff that comes along with i guess having a team in vegas especially one that is doing as well as the knights are doing and you know it was a game well played uh, for sure. We met, like Christine was saying, some great, some great fans, including Chris, who is the host of the Locked On Vegas Golden Knights podcast, whose son was a huge Rangers fan. So that was absolutely amazing. He kept chanting oh, the entire he, time. He Let's was go Rangers. It was <laughs> fun. He was like, Let's go Rangers. And then I, you'd hear some other people just try to out chirp him and Nope. That was, was funny because I'm I'm like, leave, it, leave him alone. He's a little kid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, was he seven or eight? He was this cute little kid. So <laughs> and we were chanting along with him. He was even doing the shame because we were trying to do that too. Every time the Knights got a penalty, we wanted to kind of even the field. <laughs> and, and I have to say, you know, just coming out of that game and at the time of this recording, so the Rangers have, have beaten the Golden Knights. We are playing Colorado tonight. So I guess this will come out Monday. So we will know a little bit more about the outcome of, of how and uh, whether or not the Rangers were able to keep up this momentum that they've somehow figured out. And I don't know if it was Gallant changing the lines up because that definitely happened. Our favorite bromance has been broken up and it seems to be working. Uh, so I can't complain about that too much. It, it, they uh, also came off that win on on Monday night as well. And that was a big win. Cause again, it was like two struggling teams kind of playing is what they were talking about and just kind of pushing through. So I honestly, to be honest, I didn't have high expectations for this game. Cause I actually watched the Knights play the Bruins and you're talking two top teams playing each other. They played so differently. The Knights weren't focused and weren't there for whatever their reason was. We were, it's funny. I saw comments after the game, but that were made prior to the game about Gallant's decision to break up the lines, thinking it was bad. And I'm like, well, now your comments look kind of foolish uh, because it actually worked. It worked well. You know, it was good to see people up on the board that we haven't seen in a while. Yeah. And the kids we getting some, it. the kids getting some actual ice time, which was amazing because it absolutely paid off. I think the Fernier looked as good as he has looked all season um miller coming in for the clutch i i think kako was great and kako scored yeah 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 so i think and I, goodrow I, just stepping it up with that cartoon fight you know that was he, beautiful yeah so, yeah that in he, the penalty box and right out with the drop the gloves kind of fight <laughs> Nice. That was funny. The was fire, like the fu yeah, the fire was like lit a little bit, and and it definitely paid off. You know, one of the things that I've been thinking about, you know, quite a bit is, did we already hit rock bottom, and are we now on the way back? I don't know the answer to that, but I do think about all the time. You know, if this is a team that can get past those kinds of hardships, then the only place to go is up. And there was a quote, it was in Ted Lasso. It's also attributed to a, like a pretty big soccer coach, Johan Cruyff, who talked about how every disadvantage 
always has an advantage that comes with it. And one of the things I've seen a lot on the boards recently is how there hasn't been like one standout player, like nobody's having a particularly amazing season. Everyone's just doing okay. But at the same time, that also means that like, if one player goes down, we'll still be all right. Like these guys will be able to rise up together. And I think that they can support each other and really have a cohesive team if they just can, you know, keep this momentum going. So to me, that that's, it bodes very well for the rest of the season. I think we're just out of a playoff spot right now, but there's still plenty of plenty of hockey to go and some huge games coming up in the next couple of weeks to months that will be, you know, the deciding factors about how the rest of the season and then the playoffs play out. Yeah, I agree with that. And I'll tell you, I think we've been talking about it for a couple episodes now. It's like, I think a lot should change these lines up a little, little bit sooner. And to rock bottom, I, you know, I don't know what rock bottom is. I mean, we never went down below the middle of the pack. So you know, let's compare it to the Anaheim Ducks who are sitting at the bottom. They haven't even moved. I would be concerned if we dropped past 20, but we never did. So we kind of stayed in that middle and we kind of tend to make our way back up. It's kind of consistent the way we play year to year anyway. So I think to the streak now is good. Overcoming a top team is good. Now it's a matter of seeing if they're going to apply what they're learning and, and keep that consistency. I do have, I, I don't know what it is, like the concerns for us not being able to beat a lower seeding team like the Ducks. Yes. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they go in with this confidence. So I, whatever it is, we've the, the whole talk was that they were kind of overthinking things, especially Igor. These two wins in a row are again again they're good and and to the original kind of statement you said I agree this was the best game they've played and now the focus is going to be on how are these lines going to stay how they're going to work together and if we can still see that level of play to create a streak so yeah. Igor had a great game I mean I think he played so well in this game against Vegas I think it was a little bit overshadowed by a couple of people scoring that that we had wanted to see score which was great but Igor had a great, great game. And he, I, I don't even want to say he struggled this year. He's just been a little more human this year than he was compared to a superhuman season last year. And, you know, that's not to say that he can't get back there. He's been having a very strong season. Even when he's been struggling, he's still doing unbelievably well. I agree. And I think one of the reasons why he did so well, I was actually kind of surprised that we held the Knights to such low shots. Most of the, you know, yeah. game. I know that they kind of caught up and we gave them some penalty minutes and they caught up on shots, but I thought defense, I, I think I had been watching that, you know, we had a lot of good block shots too. So even defense stepped up and I know that's our, our weakest link there. <laughs> And that's what happens when you play it all together. A lot of conversation comes up with Igor playing better, but let me remind people, and I've been saying it a lot in the last week or so, Igor doesn't win the game for us. He'll save the game, but he's not going to win. Yeah. we got to score to win. The goalies don't score. Although I think we also put a bet that Igor is going to try. <laughs> he's bound to get a score somewhere. I would love it if it was the winning goal. That would be the best thing ever. So I think it'll happen <laughs> this season. Absolutely. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, Christine, because we talked about this at the very beginning of when we started this podcast about potential MVPs for the season. And I think we were both leaning toward Panarin. And now that we are, you know, in December, we've seen, you know, we've seen Panarin kind of show up most of the time. I think he struggled a little bit. Great on points and assists, not so much goal scoring. How are you feeling Panarin wise about MVP? Do you think he's still going to pull it out this season? Do you think there's still, there's still room to go? Well, he just hit 600 career points during that game, by the way. So I'm going to stick with my man. Yes, actually I do. I think as much as we want to see him shoot, there were some moments during that game where I was like, I'm going to strangle him if he spins around one more time because he did have a couple opportunities to take a shot. Oh, there was one where he, he passed it and we lost it. So I kind of felt in the beginning he was going for points. I kind of still think that. I think he's doing fine. Points are points, whether you're scoring or you're assisting. So uh, he's still showing that he's contributing, although people may not see it the way they want to. Um, I'm starting to lean more toward Mika these days. I, I think he's been playing so well. It feels effortlessly well for him. Like it's just very natural, like two huge goals in this game against Vegas. I think he's so good that it's almost like you don't even recognize how good he is because he's good all the time. And he's so consistent and he's so fast on the ice. I might be leaning a little, uh, a little bit away 
We'll obviously see what happens. I think they're both playing very well. And I think we've had a couple of like standouts from, I think hedl has been playing really well. And I don't know if he's getting sort of the recognition that he's been deserving on some of these plays. I think Trocek has actually been playing quite well as well. I mean, I don't know if they're going to be like MVP contenders, but for sure they're playing very well. So speaking of Trocek, so one of the interesting statistics that came up uh, this week was on Monday. Are we unlucky in, in how we're playing? And what came up was that, I'm sure the number's higher now, is the number of posts we hit. So we are the leader in the NHL with the number of posts. Trocek on Monday was the, the sole winner of that category. So I'm like, we're leading something. We're number one, <laughs> we're number one in posts in two categories. So let's take anything we can get right now. And I thought that was really funny. So, and considering that we've lost a few games by one goal, like, is that unlucky? The post has not been our friend. Remember, I was trying to look up stats on, on the post, but so someone's keeping them because they had them all up there. Yeah, that little thing's gotten in our way. 50 plus times now. So let's try to not aim for that. And uh, <laughs> let's see what we can do and get off the top of that list. <laughs> if anyone from the Rangers organization is listening, please pass that message on to the players. That's from us. That's uh, some, key, <laughs> some key coaching. Pretty please. Yeah. Yeah. From, so let's, from we double defense. Change, <laughs> we want to change, you know, Trocek's like kind of line yeah. from the leader yeah. of the post to, you know, to kind of scoring. I thought that was pretty funny earlier this week. And now every time we hear a ding, it's just going to be like, we're still winning. Yeah, so I we don't want to hear that. Up until I think it was last game, I, I can't remember which game it was, but Kako like hit the post like three times. Yes. And the, the, oh, in one game. In it one was game. like in one game. And somebody on Twitter said that they want to perform an exorcism on him because that's the only way he it's gonna be fixed. But maybe things will turn around a little bit. And I think, you know, Christine, he scored, you, you, so he, 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 yeah, he did. And, um, you know, maybe it is a confidence thing. Maybe they're going into some games overconfident. Maybe they're going into other games, not confident enough, but I think if they can stay on this trajectory and keep kind of channeling that same energy, there's nothing that can stop them. And with the post, at least they're creating those opportunities. And when things are going to start going right, you know, I think we'll get a little bit more luck back on our side as long as they're staying with that same kind of consistency because they're just creating that luck. I think generally a season, which is very interesting because I think not just us, because I'm paying attention to it and I'll throw it over to Sarah too to see what she's seeing, but we're seeing a lot more scoring, but we're seeing a lot more shooting. So even though there's one or two games where they're held to 20 shots, there's been seasons where that's all we got. And that was the number but now I mean we really are seeing 30 40 shot games from teams not just from the Rangers but from around the league which is creating again more of a challenge for you know the goalie statistics and general scoring so like how is your game that you enter are you generally seeing your teams like scoring or shooting higher and getting more yeah, scores that Flames game was really it was a really strange one for me to see the other night. It started off with like the entire first period felt like I was at a funeral, like the vibe in the arena. Like it was very somber. It was military appreciation night. Usually that's like a fun, vibrant, exciting game. Um, there was no reason to have that vibe there in my opinion. And it just really, it was felt everywhere from the ice to the fan level, everything. It was just a very strange first period. Shots on goal. I think they were around 20. I think it was like 17 to 14. But second, third period, night and day difference. Everybody woke up. It was back and forth. Tons of shooting on net. Uh, both ends, for sure, which was great. Flurry, I know I posted about this. I love that man. That goalie, he's <laughs> just like, from his Team Canada World Junior days, he's had my heart for a long time. So I love him, and he looked phenomenal. Calgary won, which was great. It was back and forth. It was a really nice hockey game from, from a shots perspective, from an action perspective. Not much fighting. It was really disappointing on that level <laughs> but but it was good it, it was nice back and forth action and how's calgary doing in the standings they're not in the top 15 because i just looked at those so i will check for that and circle back in a second <laughs> but overall like while we're talking about lots of shots on net i definitely think that's what we're seeing this year easily in the top five we're seeing boston and jersey stay in those top two spots toronto has weaseled their way into third place uh, as of this afternoon oh, that's because we beat the knights <laughs> and vegas is fourth so i expect that to change i, I think we're all in the same page there that that's that's not a, a long-term standing there um but winnipeg like i keep and i keep saying it with that tone winnipeg like why are they there it's winnipeg and dallas and carolina seattle so i mean we're seeing all the same usual suspects pittsburgh sitting in 10th which is nice i mean we're going to talk about pittsburgh again in a second we've projected since the beginning of the season that new york and pittsburgh as well as uh the boston and the vegases uh would all be up there so i don't think we're going to see too much interchanging there i think we're going to see these guys say uh new york i expect to move up I expect Winnipeg to come down, but it's been a nice 
point in the season where we're seeing all these shots on goals like we expected to see at the start of the year. That lull period there, end of October, early November, I don't know what happened, but it affected almost everybody. Yeah, and when you're lo- when I'm looking at points from like the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference, it seems like the Eastern Conference is dominating mm-hmm. this year in terms of in just in terms of points. But it's like a couple of teams that are just saying staying ultra consistent. The West is going to be interesting to see how things play out for the rest of the season. Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking at the points now. I think like I think if the Rangers were in the West, I think they would have secured a playoff spot. But yeah. we're like tied yeah. in points, so yeah. It's- yeah, you know, and right now too, there's a big game differential with some of the teams. Like we may be at 28 games. Some teams are still at 24. I don't know why they're so behind in games, but it's just the way the scheduling works too. Yeah. So it, it gets wonky and is, you know, until everyone's really evened out on their games, that's a concern as well. The Rangers have actually played more games than a lot yeah. of the other teams. Um, yeah. So when we're even in points, it's a little bit more nerve wracking. And, and yeah, I'm not sure where that, yeah, where that scheduling differential had come from. Calgary sitting in 17th. Edmonton is in 15th. That's interesting. They're playing each other again for the last Battle of Alberta just after Christmas, which I'm trying to get tickets to. So if anybody's listening, I would love a hookup. I don't want to sit at the press level uh, if I can help it. Help us out, guys. Help us. Yeah, help us out. (laughs) But Anaheim, like, do we think they're going to move at all? (laughs) I don't know. I don't don't know. They can stay there. That's fine. Yeah. Let's not make this complicated. They can just just enjoy. You got to have a title for something. I'm going to be honest. I I think what's going to get really exciting as we crawl toward the end of the regular season is um, Rangers and Penguins yeah. because they're going to be very close. And this might be a very divided podcast for <laughs> for a couple of weeks. And and if anybody is joining us for the first time, Christine and I are big Rangers fans and Sarah is a Penguins fan. This is it is more of a, a New York Rangers centered podcast, but we have 33.3% of us pulling for the Penguins. So <laughs> this could get very interesting and very exciting. And the Rangers do play the Penguins you know at least twice in new york um, in the same in, week yeah March. within the same week so that yeah in mid-march so things are going to get real interesting real quick especially with all these teams like the islanders are right there the capitals are pretty close the, the flyers are kind of you know a little bit further behind but this could be a real interesting end to this season and that's why these games right now they feel like yes they're important but, you know, it, it's easy to go, okay, there's always next week, there's always next game. These are the games that we'll look back on and go, oh my God, if they had won that, then we'd be sitting in a playoff spot right now. We're fine. It's funny. Now the thought is, is to, do they schedule these games intentionally? Because in March, where we're getting it toward the end of the season, you know, and in that role toward, yes, yeah, solidifying not just your playoff spot, but who you're going to play, they pit us together with our our nemesis and <laughs> and then they then we're getting two games in three days kind of a thing where like it's gonna be brutal yeah so there's gonna be some fights and it's gonna get ugly well that'll be fun we should make sure we're there <laughs> absolutely I'm- i think it's gonna be crazy with the those two things and i wouldn't doubt it if we were like vying for a position at that point too yeah um it's, it's going to be fun. And I think, you know, just before Christmas, Santa's bringing us a Rangers and Penguins game on the 20th. So that'll be, that'll be interesting to watch. We'll get our little preview. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be good. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be telling, I think. And then especially that next meetup in March, I think will be a little more intense. I'm good. I, I'm good. We, you know, right now, I think I, I'm kind of happy. Everyone's healthy. That's the other thing too, is keeping everybody healthy. If we stay healthy, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll start making our way back up the top. The teams at the top are sitting pretty there. There's quite a point differential. So but streaks change. And, uh, and so I don't really worry about the standing soft to the all-star game where it really kind of matters. Then it really flows fast and it's, everyone's heightened up there. So, so we'll kind of see where we're in winding there. We tend to be you know, right at that last spot or in that wild card spot right around there too. And hey, you know, I know we talk a lot about rivalries. I do want to mention again, like how great it was meeting the ladies of the Golden Knights. Like that was, it was such a nice supportive group of people. It was really a positive experience. I hope Sarah has the same experience when she goes in a Penguins jersey to Madison Square Garden. Uh, we'll see how we that, will we'll make see it how happen. that plays. We'll we will make it happen. Out. And just to <laughs> recap, Liz and I, we co-hosted our first 
pregame party along with Stacy representing you know her efforts to create this wonderful group of women in hockey. Stacy actually has created um, herself a business and a and just a wonderful community of not only ladies of the Knights but uh, ladies of every team. So on Facebook, if you're listening and you're a fan of a particular team, you can go on Facebook and find ladies of the Blues, ladies of the Rangers, which is how again Liz and I had met originally, and become part of that group and. It, they're very supportive. They, you know, they encourage following each other on, on Instagram and Twitter, all different social medias. And for, for supporting your business, if you have a personal business or something to share it and Stacy does kind of promote meeting and getting group pictures. So for her to, to join forces and to co-host this party, we had such a great turnout. My children showed up. One of the best moments was and I had some friends from New York showing up, but one of the best moments was sitting there again in my hungover state. Some girl walked into the bar and she was like, Christine, I did not recognize her. She remembered meeting me in Anaheim earlier in the year. She's actually from Arizona, but she knows people that were part of the group. So that's why it was a little harder. I met 10 people and she met me. So she had known people. So she remembered the Jersey I was wearing and somehow remember my name walked into this bar in the middle of Vegas and happened upon me. So, so we had grown our group. It was her and her husband. It was my friend, Ted. And it was even the guys that got us drunk and I, they even showed up. Uh, and then Stacy yeah. <laughs> <was, laughs> brought in a bunch of women too, that kind of joined us. So we had a great turnout for, you know, our first official, you know, pregame party and hosting it in, in Vegas. We definitely have to make it a tradition because it was so fun. We will learn to uh, party more responsibly and maybe more moderately because the hangover is not that fun. <laughs> will uh, we? Will we? Really? <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> we just need more support. <laughs> Christine, I feel like anybody meets you, you would be so memorable. Like I, I already know that I think of you all the time when something like that you say or that you like comes to mind. So. <laughs> I think people shame, remember, shame. People remember you so easily. I I can understand how someone would be like Christine, and you're like, oh, I don't know who you are. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but because you're you're you know you're such a presence. I I totally oh, get thank that. You. Yeah. <laughs> But I try to be helpful too. That's the one thing. And I love meeting the people at the games. And we only meet once a year, but I I remember people, I can't remember everybody because it's once a year and I don't know their names, but like, and when they remember me, it's because usually if I'm in the front the, during the warm ups and stuff, I'm always like sharing, taking pictures. That's what happened at the Kings game. I had, I took some pictures when I could of a girl and her dad and she was getting a stick and I sent it to him and then it was so cute because they made another sign and I didn't recognize them at first. And I was looking at their sign, just trying to be social. And again, we were promoting our podcast and everything too. And, um, yeah, they, they showed me the sign and all of a sudden he realized it was me. And he's like, well, you took this picture from last year. So, so that's always nice to see. I just like everybody to kind of share in the fun and the joy of everything. So it's good that it's the same kind of family that meets there every year. Cause I do recognize other people too. So it's a nice little, a little five minute reunion <laughs> once a year. And I think Rangers fans are so receptive to it. Like there were a couple of people who were just walking by with Rangers jerseys and Christine would be like, come on over. And there were the people that we, we had met, uh, we met earlier that day. Cause the guy was wearing a Rangers Jersey and we're like, come on over. And they totally came and they totally wanted to hang. And it's really awesome to also hear people's like a lot of transplanted New Yorkers who happen to be living in other places. A lot of people who just happen to be in Vegas for something else they were able to to come to this game so we've traveled a little bit to away games this year but Vegas is such a great location to really have people like congregate together and just have a great time so this is now going to become a double defense tradition for sure um, notes to everybody listening mark your calendars yeah, as soon as we have, as soon as we get uh, the next next it's gonna year's, happen. Yeah, next year's <laughs> Vegas, we're we are booking it, and we're, we'll make it a we'll make it a really big thing. So the place is nice to too. To. We it was we met at the beer house, and which is right outside. And again, just to kind of also, so if you haven't been there, we forget you can drink on the streets. So the beer house is right yeah. there. We start walking. They have beautiful sculptures, and they had a stage in front of T-Mobile Arena with people singing and they had a big Jameson truck there and mascots and all flamingo people. You yeah, know. yeah. Showgirls, cheer, uh, cheerleaders, everything. Yeah. It was just insane. And, uh, and it was so quiet. I got there at three o'clock. It was 
so quiet. So it definitely built up pretty quickly. And then afterward too, there's, it was a nice, a nice environment for people. And, and again, people were just very, very kind and respective, you know, no negative comments for anything from people I saw. So well, I think that's because all the Golden Knights fans went home and it was the Rangers fans that stayed out, that stayed out to, uh, to have one, to have a celebratory drink afterward. The Flames game was early that night. So by the time I got home, I flipped on the Rangers Vegas game. I caught most of the third period. And it was at the point where I think it was the fourth goal they scored and the Vegas goalie just like lost it. He like slammed his stick against the post. And he's like, you know, I saw that. Yeah. And we like to see. And then from the our, camera from our roof seats. We had a bird's eye view. <laughs> <laughs> the camera pivots to this uh, Rangers fan in a St. Louis jersey, just dumping a tall can all over himself. Ah, and I didn't see that. I, I saw it only <laughs> afterward because I didn't see it happen at the game, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is amazing. Like, look at this go. And just like, it was so nice to see not only the team obviously flourishing as in, as we intended them to all season, as we've been talking about, they're capable of it, but also to see Vegas get frustrated because it's not very often you see that. It was, it was fun. So just looking at the schedule, uh, the Rangers do play the Avalanche tonight. Um, and then on Monday, December 12th, we're playing the Devils. And then on Thursday, we're playing the Maple Leafs. So next week will be an interesting one. I think we'll have an understanding about which direction this team is going to choose to go now that they're at this pivotal point. We're back on the upswing. Let's see if we can keep this momentum moving forward. But either way, this is going to be a very exciting week in front of us. Especially the Devils, because I think what gets in their head is that there's such a rivalry too. I think for whatever reason I feel with the streak going on that it's getting to them a little bit more than the normal like uh, Islander rivalry which I think is is more prominent but the Devils I think I think the last game got in their head we play well tonight it'll be a good game I'm gonna- It'll yeah, I'm curious to see how these lines work It'll against uh, against the avalanche. So we'll report back next week on that. I think our hangovers will be done by then. We'll be refreshed <laughs> and and ready. We we are back from Vegas uh, in one piece. Uh, I my my phone is not on airplane mode anymore. I, I am found. I am safe. I do have a habit of getting lost. <laughs> I remember because Liz and I are texting back and forth. And I'm like, oh my god checking your socials i'm like okay well she was at a bar at least at 3 a.m so <laughs> she she made it to the bar <laughs> we, then we drank blue drinks and then one funny story so we i don't really remember the ride back in the uber with my girlfriend i think she was videotaping the scenery you don't see anything but you hear me because they're talking about a rodeo because there's this big rodeo in vegas right now in my drunken stupor at five something in the morning you hear me say forget about the rodeo we have this podcast and we're doing a party and then it went to a bunch of vowels after that i think so <laughs> i i did my best to promote us in every, every way shape and form i could so forget about the rodeo <laughs> that, that's why that's why we have all these new followers <laughs> 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 it worked. It worked. We are doing well on followers. We definitely appreciate all our new friends. And again, a big, always a big shout out to Stacy. We are going to talk more with Stacy throughout this season and all the things that she's accomplished because she was just a pleasure to meet. And, uh, and I like how she's not only promotes women in the sport and bring up, but uh, the unity of it too. So we can all root for different teams, but we can also all get along really well and talk you know, I mean, I, 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 the, I like the fun rivalry, you know, it's like we can chirp back and forth on the teams and keep it good and keep it fun. And I like that. And all the women we met, we did a big group picture. They were so cute. So, and everyone was very happy and they have amazing sparkly. Amazing. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Like so all the jerseys are like made of this like gold, but like sparkly material. I, I don't even know how else to describe it. They have great great accessories like Stacy is great like everything was just very <laughs> impressed we were just very impressed by Vegas overall I can't we'll wait to back. see it myself oh my god oh just wait till next year when uh, <laughs> triple defense is together <laughs> we're gonna we're when we'll have our own bling by then too just you wait <laughs> we'll, we'll be ready for the next game for sure well thank you ladies we are excited for next week please reach out to us on social media we love hearing from you guys and and we are looking forward to recapping Shortly. Yeah, our, our next drinks may be some kind of quiet. Maybe we'll just go like 
apple juice or like something <laughs> kind of light. We'll keep it light, you know. So <laughs> I like our, our, drink pairing, our, right our drink pairing for tonight was whatever we drank <laughs> in Vegas. So yeah, our, yeah, drink pairing <laughs> for Avalanche, which I mean, this will air, this will air after, but it, it was whatever you drank in Vegas. So make sure you do exactly that. And then Christine texted me. She's like, "What did we not mean? drink?" Yeah, what did we not drink in Vegas? So I I, I drank a flower that you know. <laughs> probably made me not remember my ride home. So I don't know what that was. <laughs> and so your post was something like, yeah, that means 20... we're drinking 27, 27 beers, 17 vodka sodas, and then five margaritas. <laughs> oh, <Holy> co- <laughs> I think between I the two count. of us, I, I think count. between the two of us, that's about what it was and, and a saying. really, really bad Bloody Mary. So, <laughs> so we'll add that in there too. Yeah. For the listeners, drink along with your alcoholic, non-alcoholic, whatever it's working. And we're going to keep those good vibes going. We'll meet here again next week to see what the next week is going to bring us. So it's, I think we're very excited about kind of closing this year out on a, on at least a fun note. Uh, and congratulations to Panarin for hitting another milestone. I love seeing these things come up too. Let's keep up the good work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Have a great day guys.